Well, Travis Banstra, Economic Development Director for the Village of Lansing. It's been uh, a while since we've been able to talk to you. Glad we could capture you on a beautiful day outside in front Absolutely. of Village Hall. It's the end of summer. What's happening in the Village of Lansing when it comes to economic development right now? Sure, Jerry. Well, I appreciate the chance to highlight some of what's happening. Um, as we're looking down this way to downtown Ridge Road, we're excited that we've already had six facade renovation projects already completed. That uh, are complete completed downtown. You bet. In the couple of years that the program's been active, uh, we now have two projects underway currently. Again, across the street from us, Unlimited Service Autos uh, doing a project. And then, of course, I'm sure most folks have driven down and seen Gus Bach Ace Hardware with a lot of construction uh, dust going on right now. And we're really excited to see that one. I know it's been on the drawing board for a little while now. Well, and that's um, been part of the classic center of town. Absolutely, for us. right time. in the heart of downtown, longtime business. So, And then we have three more projects on the drawing board right now with Kilroy's slated to do uh, a big project uh, probably next spring now. The, their plans are being finalized. Jack's Pub and Eatery is still on the drawing board as well. And then uh, we're currently working with the Clock Tower Office Plaza right behind the post office. Uh, they have some new ownership and trying to do some improvements to that office center there. So it's good to see people taking advantage of that. And we, you know, we're excited to continue to market that program next year as well. It's familiar to you and maybe to some of the business owners, but explain real briefly once again, what is this facade sure. improvement program and how is the village involved in it? Absolutely. The real vision behind the facade program is to try and incentivize businesses or owners of buildings to try and do the improvements. So um, the idea is that whatever you do the, to the exterior of your building, could be windows, doors, paint, whole new siding, stone, what, lighting, landscaping, whatever it may be, uh, the village will match up to 50% of those funds uh, with a facade grant. So. And so six are underway it's been happening over the last two years mm -hmm. what's been the response and is there anything measurable or is this more kind of an aesthetic view of business improvement in sure Lansing? i mean the measurables is is just the number of projects i think you know we always go out and try and tout to folks to take advantage of it i think as we see more and more projects taking shape that's what really speaks for itself when people drive by and see the beautiful renovation projects whether it's small or big that's when they get inspired to do it themselves. So, you know, in terms of the measurables, it's really about just, uh, you know, creating a, a new home for a business for the long term now, whereas maybe their facade was at end of life, uh, and now it just starts hopefully to attract new businesses. That's when we really start to see some of the payoff, see people walking down Ridge Road, shopping at stores. Now, beyond the improvement of old businesses, there has been, obviously, even since the opening of Walmart earlier in the year, a lot of activity on both the main Ridge Road corridor and the Torrance Avenue corridor. Let's talk more specifically near Walmart, a couple of things going on, the old Mr. Quiros and the old Papalanos, what's going on there? Yeah, sure. Well, we're excited. Uh, I know a lot of people have been watching the old Papalanos restaurant carefully. I know that was a treasured institution here in Lansing for a lot of years. Really excited, hopefully this fall, to have a new restaurant opening there named Bohemian Joe's. Bohemian uh, Joe's. Which uh, nods to the his historical building in Lansing, I think, from maybe 100 years ago. But uh, they're currently completely renovating the restaurant inside and doing some exterior work as well. Uh, you know, full, full service American restaurant. I know they're really looking to have a unique menu. An opening date set yet? Not yet. They're just targeting fall yet, maybe November. We'll wait and see. You never know with construction, but I know they're working hard to do it this fall yet. So, And recent beginnings at the old uh, Miss Heroes. You bet. There. It's always good to see some demolition work beginning. That's when it, you see something really happening. But uh, T-Mobile has signed a lease to occupy a new building there, or I should say a significant renovation of that building. We'll see the entire lot completely torn out and redone. Uh, it's really going to, you know, as one of the first buildings you see when you get off, uh, the expressway, it's really going to be nice to have a brand new looking facility there. So not an eating establishment, but a retail operation nonetheless with you bet. Uh, and electronics I think, for technology. Uh, we'll see, I anticipate seeing some new businesses coming into that shopping center in front of Walmart as well uh, in the coming months, it, maybe even into the spring. You know, we actively keep in touch with the owners of that plaza. I know for one, 
Uh, in fact, the sign's up already. Uh, uh, Cali Beauty is in the rear of the building. We, we anticipate them opening in early November. It's hard because there's a lot going on behind the scenes for many months. It's like laying the foundations of a building. But as you look overview right now in terms of the economic, let's say, energy that's happening for new business startups or old business renovations, can you do, give us the broad description of what's happening with Lansing right now? Well, I think it's good to see, and Walmart's been part of it, no doubt, but uh, it's good to see now finally some, some buildings that are selling, some new businesses that are moving in. Obviously, we see more that need new owners or new tenants yet, but we're finally starting to see some strong activity throughout the corridor. I mean, just down the road on Torrance and Ridge, you've got new to you resale. Uh, shop doing some work on that building, ready to get to move in there. The old Decker building. You got it. The old Decker Electric building, uh, north of the expressway. You know there was America's Kids Factory to You, Rainbow Apparel moved in, uh, batteries and bulbs, uh, right at 170th and Torrance behind uh, American Sale 360 Hair Club, which uh, supplies salon products to all uh, licensed salon operators throughout the region. Uh, they just opened their doors this week. So we're finally starting to see some movement on some of the vacancy there. Uh, but in the retail world, there's always shifting. I mean, it's, it's the way it works. There's people coming and people going. Hopefully now the equation seems to be working a little bit more in our favor. You're describing it, uh, and I know that there's been activity behind the scenes, almost as if you're waiting for things to happen. But, but I know that there's a lot of effort that happens behind the scenes. Are there more possibilities, more significant developments that the city is pushing sure. forward right now? Well, I think it's one of the important benefits of our TIF districts that the village leadership has put in place, both recently in the last few years, as well as some of them are 20 years old. They're important tools. Uh, let's take Torrance Avenue, for example. Uh, you know, I, I can't get into specifics about exactly where, but we're pursuing different redevelopment opportunities where we might have a chance to assemble properties that really have no use anymore. Uh, they aren't going to be retenanted by anyone. And we try and look to work with developers to put in something new uh, that will attract new businesses that will be good for Lansing residents. You so th that's, you know, that's one of the strategies. But I know I think the important thing to remind folks of is that you know, unfortunately, as much as I would like to sometimes, we don't control, you know, who moves in where, who invests. All we, what we do try and focus on is creating the environment where people see things happening and they see that it's a village, a municipality that's good to work with. They see good opportunities. So we, that's why we try and invest in corridors and just work on recruiting as much as we can. Perspective, as you're mentioning, is always uh, difficult to determine. There are the older residents or residents who've been around for a long time who have one perspective, people coming in from the outside who have another perspective. From an economic development perspective, sure. is Lansing in a good position right now and is the interest strong from the outside that this is a place worth investing in? Sure. I think we are because we have our strong corridors. Uh, you have a downtown uh, that has been historically a, a destination point. Uh, there's no doubt, I think, that we see a need to continue working with property owners and existing businesses there and, and downtown Ridge Road. And Torrance, the same. Particularly north of the expressway, it remains a regional shopping destination. So you know, the retail world is changing if you look at the national tenants. Uh, the way that they're shrinking footprints, they're consolidating into shopping centers that you know are different than the way they used to look. Malls are different, uh, big boxes are different, everything's different. So that world's always shifting. We try and stay on top of that as much as we can and sometimes it means we may you know, need to be proactive in working with Good. developers. You, that was a broad answer, but may I be a little bit more sure. specific? Is this a good time for people coming to look at the village of Lansing? Are we getting interest? Is there a yeah. good perspective from the outside that this is a place worth coming to? It is, and I think the the existing list of what we were talking about business-wise is showing that. Uh, you know, we're right here at Burnham and Ridge. We were talking Torrance and Ridge. You know, on Burnham Avenue, you had Miss B's Italian Ice and Ice Cream open up in the former Dairyville. Uh, there's a shopping center by the airport that's been purchased. We're looking for some plans from an owner there. Um, so I think after some waiting, 
we're finally seeing people taking advantage of some of the opportunities to buy up properties and open businesses. Vision, perspective, is looking to the future. Fox Point, downtown, what are the, what are the big projects that you and the city are dreaming about right sure. now? Sure. Well, Jerry, we're standing on one of those visions. Uh, right here next to Village Hall, the village purchased this land with the idea of adding some parking here, but also, more importantly, adding a new aesthetic focus to this corner with some landscaping, some benches, seating, just a, a place people can drive by on Ridge and Burnham and be proud of, you know, seeing their town, some seeing pride, something yeah. new, absolutely. Uh, turning downtown, you alluded to Fox Point. I know that's been something that's, you know, continues to be talked about a lot. You know, right now we've had a concept plan of what that might look like drawn up. Uh, residents may have seen it in the Village Vision or elsewhere. And at this stage, we're working actively with the mayor, village board, and our planning staff to now take that concept out to businesses, to organizations in the community, to just figure out how, what do we need to tweak, what do we like, how can we make it the best it can be. And we look forward now in the coming months to also have a public forum to give residents an opportunity as well. Clearly, for many residents, this has been a traumatic period the last four or six months. There's been administrative changes, makes it perhaps more difficult to make smooth transitions. But looking at the current economic environment in Lansing, are, are you, Travis, bullish on where we are and where we're going as Lansing? Yeah, well, it's exciting to be talking about businesses actually opening and coming in. You know, as we were alluding to, there's so much behind the scenes that happens. So now that we see it finally taking place, that's great. Um, so I am bullish. Uh, I'm excited to see some of the changes just in, in, the, in the aesthetics of downtown already that have happened. And those are the things that we want to continue to invest in as a village, to invest in the environment. We, we want to create a positive environment and continue to do that. And I'm bullish that people are going to see that and invest here, continue to invest here. Are you open to suggestions? Are there, if there are residents, I know that you've been in this process for about a year and a half now that you've been in this seat. Is there still opportunity for the average person in Lansing to give you some input with their ideas? What's the format for that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it could be a village board meeting. It could be just calling into Village Hall. Anytime we do some of the seminars, like a Fox Point, that's why we try and go out and do that to, to give people an opportunity face to face to offer any suggestions or concerns. We definitely welcome that. Well, Travis, thank you for taking a few minutes to uh, talk with us about economic development. We hope to follow up again over the next few weeks and months. But last word, what do you want to say to the village residents about where we're at right now in terms of the economy and the economic development here at Lansing? Sure. I hope that uh, their patience through the downturn that Lansing and this whole region has experienced will be rewarded now as we see not only the village investing, but as we see businesses, whether existing or new, also sharing in that investment and continuing to work together to revitalize. So I hope that they'll continue to shop here in Lansing, to do business here in Lansing, because that's really the greatest driver of future growth. Uh, but I hope that they'll share their feedback with us as well and continue to believe in where we're headed. Thank you, Mr. Banstra, for your interview, and we hope and pray that you keep up the good work. Thank Thanks, Jerry.